In Area 51, a convoy of soldiers is transporting a highly classified package without knowing what it contains. Nearby, a newlywed couple is driving down the same road, and the husband becomes distracted when the wife starts pleasing him. This makes their car crash against the military truck, causing a huge explosion that throws the payload to the middle of the road. The soldiers come closer to retrieve it only to be attacked by a zombie known as Zeus, who proceeds to kill every soldier on his way without mercy. Noticing that bullets do nothing, two soldiers try to run away, but Zeus soon catches up to them and rips a soldier's jaw off before grabbing the other one to bite him. In just a few seconds, the soldiers become zombies too and follow Zeus to Las Vegas. That night, complete chaos and destruction take over Las Vegas as the zombie infection spreads, causing most of the locals and tourists to become zombies too. Soon mercenaries appear in the area to help kill the monsters, both as a job and revenge for losing their loved ones to these monsters attack. Any person that is even a scratch or drop of blood is seen as infected and they get killed as well. The military also comes to try to deal with the situation, but the zombies go up in numbers incredibly fast and the horde becomes impossible to control. Eventually the whole city gets walled off from the rest of the world. A few years later, the government discusses the possibility of nuking the entire city of Las Vegas, but human rights groups protest against the idea. Former mercenary Scott is working at a diner when he's approached by billionaire casino owner Tanaka, who makes a big offer. There are $200 million under his Vegas hotel, so he wants Scott to gather a team to retrieve the money before the government bombs the city. If Scott accepts, he can take $50 million and split it amongst his crew. Tanaka gives him time to think about it and as proof of good faith, he gives Scott the building's blueprints. Meanwhile Scott's daughter Kate works as a volunteer at a quarantine zone camp. She's friends with a woman named Gita and helps her look after her two kids. Gita is thinking of joining a mercenary named Lily to make some money to escape from the camp with her children, but Kate warns her it's very dangerous. Their chat is interrupted by security guard Bert, who uses any excuse to harass women. That night, Scott dreams of the day his wife became a zombie and attacked him, so he had no choice but to kill her in front of Kate. Inspired by the memory, he calls Tanaka to accept the job, then he goes out to recruit former mercenaries to put a team together. He starts with his old friends, he finds Maria working as a mechanic, Van der Rohe at a retirement home, and Peters as a pilot. Then Scott goes after some big names in the business, there's Mikey, who became famous by killing zombies for YouTube, and lastly Ludwig, a bank teller with a passion for safecracking. The next day, everyone retrieves their old weapons from their hiding spots and gets together in an abandoned warehouse. Mikey brings his friend Chambers, who like Ludwig never killed a zombie and Scott has to teach them to go for the brains. Then Tanaka shows them a mock-up of his casino. They won't be able to fly in without getting arrested, but there's a helicopter on one of the towers for them to fly out. Tanaka's plan is simple, the team has 32 hours to enter the city, kill any zombies that may still be around, turn on the casino's generator, and reach the vault at the end of a corridor where it'll be surrounded by traps. Then Peters can fly them out of there. Tanaka also makes his head of security Martin go with them. The only issue left is finding a way inside, so Scott goes to see Kate, who isn't happy to see him after years of absence. At first she doesn't want to help, but she changes her mind when Scott promises to share the money with her. Meanwhile Gita ignores Karen's warnings and asks Lily to take her on her next mission. In the morning, Van der Rohe teaches Ludwig how to shoot a gun so he can defend himself. Soon Kate shows up with a refugee bus and takes them to the camp outside the city, where she reveals that Lily will be their guide into Las Vegas. On her way out, Kate finds Gita's kids alone and learns that Gita was lost during the mission, so she punches Lily for it. However Lily reminds her that Gita knew the risks and that there's a chance she may still be alive. Desperate to find her friend, Kate decides to join the team, which Scott doesn't approve of. Before they leave, Lily claims they need one more person and chooses Bert to come with them. Then Lily guides them through a secret entrance in a container and the team finally makes it to Las Vegas, which has become a small post-apocalyptic land of its own. They barely get to take a few steps before they hear some noises and run to hide while watching a zombie tiger wander around. Once it's gone, the team comes out and suddenly Lily shoots Bert in the leg before tying him up. Lily knew Bert took advantage of women in the camp and brought him to be used as an offering for the zombies in the area, who will leave them alone if they play by the rules. The team hides again and watches how zombie queen Athena comes to sniff Bert before taking him away with the help of another zombie into the Olympus casino. Now the team can keep going, unaware that Zeus is watching from afar. Inside the Olympus, a huge zombie horde is eager to feed on Bert, but they step back when Zeus appears. After checking on Athena's belly, Zeus grabs Bert and bites his arm before throwing him at the horde. Then Zeus goes into another room where he's keeping Gita and two more women, throwing one of them against a wall. Back to the team, they go through a tunnel filled with rotting bodies. There also are a bunch of hibernating zombies, so Lily warns the others not to make loud noises or point their lights at their eyes. Scott leaves small lights on the ground to guide the way and the group carefully moves around the zombies, making sure not to touch them. Chambers makes Martin walk ahead of her because she doesn't trust him and he's so annoyed that he changes the position of a light on purpose. When Chambers follows that direction, she accidentally bumps into a zombie and wakes him up, 
so she quietly stabs his head to kill him. Unfortunately this also wakes up two more zombies, so she quickly kills them too with the same knife. She lowers the last body slowly on the ground, not noticing an arm gets stuck on some trays. Chamber only takes two steps before the zombie's arm accidentally pushes the trays, making enough noise to wake everyone up. As Chamber opens fire and stabs any zombie that gets too close, the creatures in the other room also wake up and the rest of the team has to start shooting too. While everyone is busy, Martin locks the door to keep Chambers behind it with the zombies. A desperate Chambers jumps through the window to reunite with the team, but the zombies follow her and quickly overpower her. Mikey tries to shoot a few off but there are too many of them and they begin eating her. With no other choice, Mikey shoots the gas tank she's carrying to end her pain and blow up all the zombies. The team manages to escape the tunnel safely and finally reach the casino, where they find a couple of zombies that they quickly kill. They're shocked to discover another set of blueprints on a table, meaning Tanaka made other teams come in and die for his money but Martin denies knowing anything about it. The group splits up with Martin and Lily going to do a perimeter check, Peters and Maria going to find the helicopter, Van der Rohe and Mikey escorting Ludwig to the vault, and Scott and Kate going to the generator. While working on bringing back the power, Scott and Kate finally reconcile after years of being apart. Once the generator is working, Ludwig's group takes the elevator to the underground floor, where more zombies are waiting. As the others open fire, Ludwig is attacked by a zombie and proudly makes his first kill. Once all their enemies are down, the trio discovers that the bodies of the previous team are still there and they fail to go through the traps protecting the vault. On the roof, Peters manages to activate the helicopter, only for it to suddenly break down and expel lots of black smoke. Thankfully Peters is also a mechanic and after putting the smoke out, she begins working on fixing it. Meanwhile outside, Martin and Lily encounter Athena and her zombie guard. As soon as Athena tries coming after them, Martin shoots a rope to capture her and then opens fire on the other guy. The zombie runs fast and dodges all the bullets before attacking Martin directly to the point of overpowering him, so Lily has to save Martin by shooting the zombie. Then Martin sits on Athena and proceeds to slowly behead her, causing her to death cry to be heard by Zeus back in the casino. Furious, he leaves while dragging a woman with him. Lily doesn't understand why Martin is being so nasty, so he explains that Tanaka and the government will pay big bucks for the head of a zombie leader because they want to control their own brainless army to win wars. After Martin puts the head into a bag, the duo goes back inside with the others. Underground, Van der Rohe and Mikey blow up the vault's gate then bring over a zombie to use as bait for the traps. The creature immediately turns on them, so they have to shoot it and bring another one. This time, they microwave a hand and throw it in front of the vault so that the zombie will follow the smell of meat. As the zombie walks, all the traps activate and attack him, revealing hidden darts, firearms, and two walls that come out to crush the zombie into a pulp. Outside, Zeus rides by on a zombie horse and finds Athena's body. He checks her stomach and roars in fury before bringing her to the Olympus, where he pulls out an unborn zombie fetus, it turns out Athena had been pregnant all along. Zeus presents the fetus to the horde, urging them to get revenge. In the casino, the rest of the team watches TV and is shocked to learn that the nuke launch has been moved up, so now they only have until sunset to get the money and flee. Desperate, the group goes to the underground floor to tell Ludwig to hurry up, but he snaps and tells them to stay silent so he can work. The vault has a complicated system of four locks, so Ludwig has to hear every little movement going inside the door. While he works, Kate checks on the emergency exit and pretends to lock it, but actually she uses a zombie hand to leave it slightly open. After lots of concentration, Ludwig finally opens the vault and the team celebrates as they start putting away all the money in bags. While everyone's distracted, Kate sneaks out through the emergency exit and has to hide inside an old car because all the zombies including the tiger are running toward the casino. Once the coast is clear, Kate rushes into the Olympus to look for Gita. Seconds later, the zombies take the elevator to the vault room and immediately kill Maria by twisting her neck. Scott begins fighting the zombies, using both guns and a knife to kill them as they come. Some of them move quickly and offer a fair fight, but Scott never gives up and keeps on attacking to avenge Maria until there are no zombies left. They can hear more zombies upstairs though, so the team leaves through the emergency exit. Ludwig and Van der Rohe go back to the vault to grab the money, and at that moment more zombies arrive by breaking through the elevator's ceiling, so the duo has to open fire. The normal zombies begin going down, but soon Zeus arrives wearing a helmet that protects him from the bullets. Van der Rohe decides to fight Zeus hand to hand, however he's quickly overpowered and thrown around like a sack of potatoes. When Zeus is about to bite Van der Rohe, Ludwig hits the zombie from behind and then pushes Van der Rohe into the vault, closing it right before Zeus kills him. Meanwhile Martin goes out first and closes the haytack behind him, leaving the team behind. He reveals Tanaka never wanted the money and that Athena's head has always been the main objective because it's worth 10 times the money from the vault. The zombies begin approaching them so while Scott and Mikey shoot every creature in sight, Lily uses an electric saw on the wall to create an alternate exit. Outside, Martin opens his bag and discovers he doesn't have the head because Lily exchanged it for a money counting machine. Suddenly he's found by the tiger, who throws him around for a while before eating his head. Back to the team, 
Lily finishes the hole and they get to leave the vault room, making it to the game area that is currently filled with zombies. Scott, Mikey, and Lily go inside and begin shooting like crazy, killing zombies all over the room while trying to move toward the other elevator. When Scott runs out of bullets, he uses some tables to defend himself while he reloads. Some zombies manage to come closer, but Scott is strong enough to fight them off before keeping on shooting. As Scott runs on the tables to gain speed, a pair of zombies jumps on Mikey and brings him down to bite him. Mikey shoots them both but also accepts he has no future, so he gives Scott and Lily time to reach the elevator before activating a grenade to bring all the zombies down with him. When Zeus comes to this floor too, he grieves for the loss of his people. Soon Scott and Lily make it to the roof, but Peters is still having trouble making the chopper work. Suddenly Zeus shows up as well and while Scott opens fire, Lily takes out Athena's still living head and threatens to shoot it. This keeps Zeus back, so Lily tells Scott to leave with Peters. Once Scott is aboard, the chopper finally takes off and Lily watches it, so Zeus uses her distraction to throw a metal rod and impale her on the wall. As revenge, Lily throws Athena's head to the ground, where it becomes pulp on impact. In the meantime, Kate searches the Olympus building, unaware that Zombie Bert has hurt her. Eventually she finds Gita and another refugee and the three of them try to leave together. At the same time, Peters drops Scott on the roof of the Olympus and he begins looking for his daughter. Suddenly the women are found by Bert, who quickly kills the refugee to feed on her. Kate begins shooting him, and the noise tells Scott their position. After some struggle, Kate manages to shoot Bert in the head, only to discover that Zeus and his horde are back. The zombies begin chasing the women, who find themselves cornered in a corridor. Bullet by bullet, Kate manages to shoot them all down except for Zeus, whose helmet still protects him. When Kate tries to shoot his body, she discovers she's out of bullets. Zeus begins running toward her, but at that moment Scott arrives and shoots a grenade, making the corridor explode. Afterward Scott, Kate, and Gita take the stairs to the roof, where they're picked up by Peters. As the chopper takes off, Zeus shows up and makes a huge jump to come aboard as well. Peters makes the helicopter suddenly turn to try to throw Zeus out, but he holds onto the edge and attacks again at the same time Scott opens fire. A fight ensues and in the struggle, a bullet accidentally hits Peters. She loses control of the helicopter and almost hits the wall, but she recovers just in time to make the chopper fly out of the city, right before the nuke is finally dropped. In just a second, the legendary city of Las Vegas explodes into oblivion. Zeus continues to fight Scott and breaks his arm, making him drop the gun. Kate finds a fire extinguisher and hits Zeus with it, but he quickly recovers and jumps on Scott again to bite him on the shoulder. This gives Scott time to retrieve his gun and finally shoot Zeus in the head. At that moment the shockwave from the nuke catches up to them and causes the helicopter to crash on the ground, killing both Peters and Gita. Kate survives and finds Scott, who reveals he managed to steal enough money to save Gita's kids from the camp. Crying her heart out, Kate says goodbye to her father and shoots him right before he becomes a zombie. Then she has a breakdown while another helicopter arrives to save her. In the ruins of Las Vegas, Van der Rohe emerges from the vault with lots of money. After wandering for a while, he finds a car and drives to an airport, where he rents a private plane. Soon he's enjoying his new fancy life with gourmet food and expensive alcohol, so he asks the stewardesses to toast with him. Suddenly he starts to feel dizzy and goes to the bathroom, where he discovers a bite mark on his arm while the pilot announces they've arrived in Mexico City. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.